Okay, so this is a first lecture in our Android course, and this will be dedicated to sort of diving you into the world of Android development, starting from how and, and what is essentially Android application is. Uh, many of you heard that, and, and many of you probably think about that, oh, I want my Android app, or you heard that, oh, there is this Android app. So th this app word, uh, which is actually a slang, uh, is everywhere right now. Everyone wants an app, everyone wants to download the app, or knows about app, or knows a friend who did app. So apps are everywhere, and we're gonna talk about Android apps <coughs> specifically. Um, so this presentation is about how Android apps are made, what it's made of, what's inside, and what, what, what components of the recipe you have to take in, put in, and what tools you have to use to produce that Android app. We're not going to uh, talk about actual implementation, actual code, but this presentation assumes that you, you're familiar with what text files are, uh, what, what files essentially are, what, what compilation is, uh, what kind of process is that, and uh, you are familiar with terms like zip archives, uh, uploading something to somewhere, uh, pretty much simple things that, that most of the people right now are, are familiar with. Uh, so first let me compare process that Android and iOS developer has to go through to get their application delivered. So as we see for Android developers, the world is way simpler. You, you have an idea, you have Android application, you download, install, uh, Eclipse, SDK tools, you implement it and publish it. You don't want to publish it on Google Play, you pick alternative uh, distribution places. When it comes to iOS, things are more complicated. Uh, so th this may sort of give you uh, hope for, for a better future as Android developer, but with that openness and that uh, that accessibility that Android offers comes great responsibility. Because there is no big brother that, that watches your applications, that monitors how you do that, uh, that can approve your application to be worth of being on, on, on Google Play. There are a lot of very bad quality applications that, that get bad ratings and uh, generally spoil how people look at Android and what people think about Android. So with, with the responsibility of, of uh, working with, with uh, open source uh, framework, which Android is, comes great responsibility. Essentially, Android application on the inside is nothing but archived set of resources. And by resources, I mean all pictures, perhaps music, videos, and more specifically text files you have in your application. Again, Java files where you keep your source code are nothing but just regular text files. Just like other XML files with XML extension that's used to express your layouts, application configuration, and a lot of di different things. They all are essentially text files and you can technically you can use any kind of text editor to edit them and save them and then build an Android application from them. Uh, but what's great about software development is, is that while you're editing uh, text files, if you, you're most of the times are giving a specific professional editor for those files, and those editors are, are capable of highlighting uh, relevant pieces of, of text or code in your files and make your development life easier. In our case, that's Eclipse. Eclipse, again, is nothing but powerful text editors. All other features that Eclipse offers are, are a side, pretty much add-ons. The most and, and greatest feature of Eclipse is text editor, and that's what Eclipse is known, known about and great about. It gives you powerful ability to edit text files, and more specifically Java and XML files, in a way that you couldn't do using regular text editors. Eclipse highlights pieces of your code, as you can see, uh, on, on the slide, text highlighted with the different colors. And the, the bigger you get involved in software development, 
the more understanding you're getting from that source code. And Android SDK, which stands for Software Development Kit, is essentially add-on for Eclipse. So what Android SDK does, it adds capabilities to Eclipse, making Eclipse being capable, not only added Android-specific source files, such as Java and, and XMLs, but it also lets Eclipse being able to build your Android application and deliver and, and deliver single exec executable with APK extension. More specifically about build process and how your Android project or basically set of text files and, and binary files are, are made into being Android executable or APK file. Uh, simplified build process goes through a couple stages. First is enumeration of your raw resources and generation Java files according to them. Second step is actual compilation of Java files into class files. A again, that this is something intermediate. And then putting it all together and just zip archiving it. So you can think of Android application as just a zip file with exchange with the APK extension. Nothing but that. In reality, build process is more complicated. I intentionally made this, <laughs> this picture smaller uh, just to show you that deep inside, things are not as simple as they are, but we are delivering them in, in simplified form to, to let you easier understand it. You don't have to know about all stages of Android compilation or, 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 or creation of Android executable uh, in deep to, to, to deliver and to produce Android applications. For last thing that Android SDK offers, which is very important, is Android Emulator. Comparing to iOS side and iOS developer, Apple uses Simulator, which is completely different from Emulator. Android, in Android world, in Android development, Android emulators actually emulate real environment. From application's perspective, application thinks it lives in actual device, even though it's emulator. Being more technical, emulator translates RAM processor comments into processor instructions of your current running machine. Um, and some of you may think that, oh, okay, well, uh, I don't really care about emulator because I have my own device. Uh, which is not always true. Sometimes to, to deliver or to test the full set of functionalities your application should have, you will need to deploy an emulator. Uh, first thing that you have to care about is making sure that your application will run on all devices. And chances are slim to none that you will have all actual devices in hand to develop on. You will need emulators to make sure that application is runnable everywhere. Second part is is great feature that emulators offer is ability to, to mimic functionality of actual device in terms of, hard, in terms of hardware. Uh, you can emulate location. You can, you can specify location files to emulator, and your application will think that it's on the actual device and device is using uh, or, or device is moving along with user and GPS coordinate is changing. You can emulate phone calls, text messages, uh, audio input, uh, play with sensors, emulate gravity changes, acceleration, a lot of the different things that you can still do it with actual device, but in case if you want to get more uh, feature set for, from, from your development environment, emulator will be handy for you. So this was an overview of how Android applications are created. Uh, there is a lot more to tell. Uh, there is huge theory behind how Java files, XML files, and resources are end up being APK, and the, 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 there is also a big story behind how you deliver that APK, how you distribute that, and how you then deliver that to your users, meaning how you advertise it, how you recommend it, how you connect it with other social networks, and uh, how you play with, uh, with, with the pricing techniques. All, all, all that stuff, uh, some of it even goes beyond actual Android developer, but this is still something that we will highlight uh, in, in, in a future process. Thank you.